Hey guys, so last time we were talking about using a brand new unfired factory brass. To get an idea of what the kind of condition the brass is in, brand new unfired, and then you'd have something to compare uh, with once fired brass or brass of an unknown origin, uh, range pickup brass or brass you might buy off the internet that uh, the seller claims is once fired or even unfired or who knows what. Uh, especially with the, the ultrasonic cleaners and tumbling with uh, stainless steel pins, you can get some brass looking really, really nice and shiny. Uh, that was that one. This one, uh, today we're going to look at brass that we know has been fired and which has passed the uh, paper clip test. You take a paper clip and bend it over into kind of like a little hook, uh, sharpen the end, and then into the case mouth it goes, and you run it along the side of the case and see if you can feel any irregularities. Like right now, I don't feel any irregularities in this piece of brass, and yet this is not a piece of brass that's safe to reload, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, same thing with this one. Um, you know, again, this passed the scrape test, um, but when I put it up to a light, uh, a bright LED light, and took a look down the mouth of the case, and then flipped it around and took a look in the uh, flash hole there, uh, I could see some, some pretty serious defects. And so this is what we're going to look at. This is how you know that your brass is uh, on the way out and bad things are about to happen. So this is a piece of uh, 556 NATO brass. It's uh, Lake City uh, 2012. There we go. And it is, is once fired brass. This is, this is out of my stash. And so I was going through it and sorting it and getting ready to uh, to clean it up and then reload and it's just by habit now after um, once finding a piece of brass that had a defect that the uh, paper clip test didn't detect so I always look through my brass uh, with a bright light it's you know it takes a little bit longer to inspect it um, normally they say a lot of the books say you know you look at the brass and you look for a bright ring or rings and this one actually does have I wouldn't call it very bright, but there is a faint ring right here. And on the piece that I cut out, you can see that here's the uh, the bad part that we'll go over in a second. And you can see there's a little bit of a ring on this side as well. This one's actually more pronounced right here. So it's more pronounced on this side. Um, but even then, you might miss it, especially if you don't have perfect lighting uh, at your reloading bench. So as you can see, there's a, and I put some sandpaper through here to, to brighten up the high spots and leave the low spot just full of the carbon and the soot and everything. So you can see that there's a low spot right here. And if you look at the case wall, right there, you'll see it. You'll see it's got a normal thickness that comes along and it decreases probably, I don't know, two thou or so, and then goes back to its normal thickness. And then right here, it starts to thicken up as it goes towards the case head. Um, and again, this tool, paperclip tool, uh, did not pick that up. But you can see that that's not something you would probably want to reload. If you did reload it and didn't have a super hot load, you'd probably be okay once. Um, maybe. Personally, I'm not going to chance it. I mean, it's a piece of brass. It's worth what, uh, you know, I don't know, seven cents, ten cents or something, you know, one cent recycled. I'd rather just toss it in the recycling bin and, uh, and be done with it. It's just not worth the risk. So you can kind of see, let's get some better light on there. So you can kind of see what we're dealing with here. All right, you just got that groove and it goes all the way around the brass. This is the piece, the cutout piece. Focus. There we go. And same thing. You can see that groove there. It goes all the way around the brass. And that is an incipient case head separation either on the next firing or the one after that, most likely. This end is going to detach from this end. This end's probably going to come out on extraction, either from a, a bolt gun or a gas gun. This end, most likely, is going to stay in the chamber, and it's going to really ruin your day, uh, in the very least, in terms of you know having to be able to shoot, unless you've got a broken shell extractor with you, um, or you just get lucky and this manages to pop out. Um, a lot of people really worry that, oh, well, a case head separates, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose my eyes, and I lose this, lose that. Uh, firearms, modern firearms especially, are designed to allow for this. There are ways for the excess gases that don't go down the barrel, but instead come back into the chamber. 
to vent. Uh, most everywhere you'll see a small vent hole uh, on a bolt action rifle. Uh, Remington Savages, Marlins, uh, what else? The, the Rugers, they all have a small vent hole and that's to relieve that pressure so to redirect the hot gas out of the action away from the shooter um, instead of back uh, through the bolt into the bolt and up through the action into your eyes and your face. Uh, and that's why we always wear uh, eye protection when we shoot. It's not so much because the eye protection is going to stop a speeding bullet coming at you, it won't. Um, but if you get uh, pieces of brass, uh, hot gas, um, unburned powder or burning powder, uh, little you know bits of lead or you know little chaff like this that might come off if, if this thing's separated, it'll protect your, your, your eyeballs. And that's why you want to wear proper safety glasses. And, and uh, you know, they, they can't regrow eyeballs yet. So that's what this one looks like. Now the next one is, I think it's, yeah, this is also a piece of Lake City Brass. And no, I'm not picking on Lake City Brass. Um, it's actually just what I happened to find in my pile while I was going through it. This is uh, 762 by 51 NATO, uh, 2011 production, I think, right? Yeah, 2011 production. And it's uh, once fired brass. And it was, well, allegedly once fired back brass. I bought a batch of brass from an, uh, a commercial online vendor that will remain nameless. Um, and they sold it as, as used brass, uh, that it came off of a military range. And most of the time, this is being fired out of a uh, fully automatic uh, weapon. And the chambers are a little bit more generously cut. And extraction is incredibly violent, even compared to semi-automatic, uh, like an M1A or something that you might have. Uh, so it does a number on the brass and sometimes it stretches the living daylights out of it. So at first glance, it really doesn't seem like there's anything too terribly wrong here. You know, you just got a piece of brass and on the outside, you know, there's a very faint dark line there that could be just from powder residue that got into some of the brass. It is suspect, I admit, but that right there is not necessarily going to tip you off that something's wrong. Uh, on the cut piece, same thing. Focus. And you got a little bit, actually this, the cut piece shows it better. You can see some coining right there, right above my thumbnail. Uh, coining is when the brass gets really shiny from being work hardened and stretching will work harden it. Okay, let me get that back into frame there anyway. And I think we can probably see it easier on this. So you can see down here towards the business end that the brass has kind of a, uh, a stretched out look. And if you feel it with your thumb, it feels, you know, it, it's a little rough. Um, you know, the rest of the case wall, up, you know, up in this area is smooth. And then you come down here and it feels just a little bit rough. And this might show it even a little bit better. Focus. There you go. You see that rough spot right down there, right about, yeah, where the middle of my thumbnail is, All right? It's really smooth, 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 smooth. You come down here, you see that rough kind of pockmark stuff, right? And then you come back down and it starts to smooth out again. Well, right there is where it's stretched. Um, this brass is actually pretty thick and pretty heavy. So it didn't leave uh, as much of a groove as the 556 brass did, but that, uh, that sort of scaly pockmarked looking stuff is stretch. And then if we flip it over this way, let's kind of take a different look. You can see ever so slightly that there is a groove. Get that out of the way. Right. About there. Now what's interesting is this groove is not very deep. You can't really feel it with the feeler unless you really push down and really try to bury the tip of this thing in there. And if you look at the case wall, right here's the groove right here. If you follow it up to the case wall, there's virtually no thinning. I mean, maybe a little tiny bit right there. Right there. And on this side, there's a little itty bitty tiny bit right there. And that's even a bit suspect because you get all this chaff and stuff here from when you cut them open with a Dremel. So um, maybe a small amount of thinning. 
if you didn't load this hot and if you resized it well, uh, you'd probably get two, maybe three more firings out of it. Um, again, it's not something that I'd want to take the chance on because you don't really know what the structure of the brass looks like uh, underneath what you're seeing on the surface. Uh, you don't know how it's reacted to being stretched and work hardened. It could be incredibly brittle right now, or it might still have a lot of its uh, ductility, malleability. Still got a lot of its stretchiness left to it, right? It hasn't turned into something uh, uh, very brittle, right? So there's that. And then, let's see, maybe now in this light we can see it a little better here. So you can kind of see that same groove right there. Okay, and again, if we look up on the case wall, on the cross section of the case wall, you might see just a little bit of thinning right there at the tip of the probe, and then down here, focus, come on, there you go, and maybe just a hint of it again right there. And this also has that uh, sort of scaly appearance as well. And you can kind of feel the scaly appearance. You can get a feel for it. Um, but again, you know, that, that could also just be powder residue. It's very hard to detect uh, by feel. Again, these were picked out by looking in them, not by doing this trick. This trick sometimes gives false positive or false negatives. Uh, that means that it says, oh, yeah, yeah, everything's fine, when in fact it's not. So that's why I just used my, my the old Mark I eyeball. It just seems like a, a more reasonable way to do it, a safer way. I know it's going to take a long, long time. Um, the only time I would ever say you could probably avoid uh, either check is if it's brand new brass that you fired in one of your firearms, literally one of them. So if you have like three or four rifles chambered in this uh, caliber, uh, and you fired it from a mix of them, I'd, I'd check it. But if you fired it from just the one rifle, uh, you might take a sampling and say, you know, out of 100 rounds, you took 5 or 10 rounds and a 5, 10% sample check. Uh, and if those looked okay, uh, then you're probably just fine. Oh, sorry about that. That was the postman, and he did knock twice, and he had uh, a package for me, which is always happy. But uh, that's for another video for another time. All right, so where was I? Anyway, uh, so that's why bright light in the case mouth, look to the flash hole, then put it to the flash hole, and look to the case mouth, obviously with the brass still intact, and you will see these defects. Uh, this, you know, again, this one was really obvious. Um, you know, and just keep looking, and if you're not sure, you know, if you see something that looks suspicious, cut it open, it's just a piece of brass. And then you'll learn something. You'll learn whether or not what you think is a defect really is, or if it's a characteristic of the brass, or maybe it was just uh, something left over from the burning powder, carbon, you know, unburned powder, whatever, uh, tool marks from the factory. So, you know what, just play it safe. Um, do a visual inspection. You know, you can still do the feely feely inspection if you want to, but the visual inspection to me seems to uh, be the best of the two or the better of the two, um, you know, and go out and have fun and uh you know what the heck and for next time i got the blue pretty solution here it's got copper in it and it's got copper ions in it that's why it's the pretty blue and it's actually going to probably get darker blue especially if i go and stick it on the warmer plate and uh well like i said that's for next time i'm going to be doing some more cool stuff all right thanks for watching guys